достаточно много вопросов. Это There are many questions. This subject about interacting with the spirit of a place or a lar is quite lively. We devoted many hours to this subject. And we have even written books about it together with our students and members of our forum who have discussed this subject. The subject concerning the spirit of a place is very interesting. It is absolutely metaphysical. So it could happen that establishing contact with the spirit of the place is just not working. What does it depend on? On the person, on the law, or maybe on the place? Let's try to figure it out. Tina sent in the following question. At my new place, I'm often approached by addicts and alcoholics. They ask me for money. A couple of times I gave money to this one particular individual. In return, he gave me postcards signed with his poetry. But as of late, I refuse to give anything due to my convictions and my financial situation. You've said before that the spirit of a place could send these sorts of people in order to collect payment. Should I keep on giving them money even though I don't want to? These people don't just approach me, but all other pedestrians too. Should I be perceiving these messages on the postcards as a sign from the local law? Could it be the consequence of my current work with the Uru's rune, meaning that I'm still in the process of negotiation with the earth element? So let's look at this very vast question colleagues and dear Tina. Let's start from the very beginning. A colleague writes that she moved to a new place, which means that she does not yet possess any evident rights in this new location. Rights should be established, they should be solidified, at least by a mutually beneficial agreement between you and the spirit of the place. There aren't any doubts regarding the existence of Alar, and that is already a good start. We see the signs. However, these signs, we don't like them very much. No, it's not like we're cuddled up by local cats or dogs. There are no fairies flying by and no cawing of crows by our window. Just some of the most unpleasant individuals that exist in human society. These kinds of people. However, all in all, these people, as Tina writes, are very unusual for their class. In some ways, they are creative and intellectual, they write poetry, inscribe postcards, but still, they are rather met with rejection. The fact of the contact itself evokes unpleasant feelings. What does it tell us? You, of course, expected more. Why did you expect more? Because you perceive yourself to be slightly above those who approach you. It would be upsetting to assume that the local law doesn't see much of a difference. Yes, it is upsetting, true. Nonetheless, it is what it is. What can be done in this situation? One could get upset. That would be easy. Get upset and say that I don't want to interact with these agents due to my convictions and financial reasons, as our colleague has said. However, words have a meaning. And our colleague wrote what she felt and what she thought. You know, my friends, magic would come into her life and stay there only in two cases, by the coinciding of two factors. The first factor is when a consciousness is able to recognize magical elements that exist in this reality. And second, when a consciousness expects these magical elements to happen, meaning when these elements can find a reflection inside a person. So by expressing it using the words of our ancient teachers, our ancestors, living within a myth is not enough. The myth must also live within you. So when these two factors coincide, that is, when the magic happens. If it is just one single factor, usually an outer factor as a rule, then the magic happens to someone else. If it is just the inner factor, then reality is subjugated to inadequate expectations. Your relationship with the lar of the town, the spirit of the place, will depend on how you are going to perceive this messenger. 
Yes, at the first glance, they might not seem to resemble elves or gnomes, not at all. They might not look like anyone you have expected to see. They don't look like divine messengers, nor like their animal avatars. They're just the way they are. And they will be perceived by you as such, as disturbing interference, if this inner magic does not live inside you. The inner magic goes away when there are expectations, when we try placing magic into a certain framework, when we try to fit it into a box, when we dress it up in pleasant or unpleasant clothing, or at least something that is more palatable for the eye. So the magic disappears, because it very much dislikes being held to expectations, something that is absolutely has no need to live up to. Because this is not your reality. You came to a new reality and you want it to become yours. But this reality was not made by you. You did not create it. A good example would be, take an immigrant who comes to a new country, another land, and he's told that your diplomas, your education means nothing here. Your language needs improvement. Start from the beginning. It used to be that way. People from the Soviet Union came to other countries that were more pleasant to them and understood that their doctorate degrees, their PhDs, don't mean a thing and that the language they learned amounts to hello, my name is Table and that's it. And they were forced to start from the beginning, to be a taxi driver or kitchen staff or whatever and so little by little they obtained what they needed. That is, if they understood the degree of their own rights and abilities. But there were also others who acted differently, who imposed their unrealistic expectations and opposed reality. It is most likely that they did not end up succeeding, unless they were helped by those who were successful. The principle is very similar here. Only we're not talking about a societal realm, but about mystical realms. If you perceive the interactions with the messengers of the local prince as a necessary and very bothersome encumbrance, then it is better not to go there at all. Really. In my lessons too, they will not fit you, and you will be constantly annoyed because you don't believe in the magical properties of this world. It will become magical only when you believe it. And this means that this alignment of the magical quality should be present both inside and outside of you. And if you are beginning to work with the earth element, as you mentioned it, or moreover with the runes, and that is a whole other level, a mystical transmutation of the consciousness, you shouldn't be dragging anything from the current societal world into your interaction with forces that create this reality. Forces manifested in a magical instrument such as runes, for example. And again, avoid imposing your expectations on the earth element, or on runes. Imposing your expectations on the reality which reflect these forces would also be completely incorrect. Incorrect because it wouldn't be beneficial for you personally, before anything else. Not for the reality, reality is all good. But it is bad for you, you won't achieve a result. First, you should do something about yourself. Ask yourself this first question. Why is it you don't believe? You want to believe in it very much, you want to live in magic, but in actually you don't really believe in it. Why is that? So when you get to the answer, when the answer to the question why becomes completely clear for you, your issue of how to interact with the local lar, with the spirit of this place, on what sort of terms, what is it that you want from him, will become clear. And you will tell him that yourself, by going to the central location of that place, to the spot where the power is gathered, you will voice your needs, you will get signs as the place sees fit. You will see these signs and draw your conclusions. This will be the honest and correct thing to do. And I really hope that my advice will help you.
Don't impose your expectations on this world as to what it should be. You can only do so with the reality that you create yourself, but not with someone else's. If you wish for that foreign reality to become yours in any sort of way, accept it for what it is. I truly hope, dear colleague, that my advice will help you. Я очень надеюсь, коллега, что мои советы вам помогут.